everybody. Today I want to give you an update on the expanding operator ecosystem. Um, the operator community kind of birthed out of this idea that uh, you know, running stateless applications is uh, pretty easy to do on Kube. And we got to stateful applications. And then really quickly, we got to these advanced distributed systems running on Kubernetes. And uh, this is really great, but uh, there aren't primitives built into Kubernetes to handle these types of applications if you want to do data rebalancing or seamless upgrades. And so that's where an operator enters the picture. And operators run these complex applications on your behalf. And the way that they work is you take the experts in an application, how it's installed, how it's failed over, how it's upgraded, and they take that expertise and embed it into the operator such that you take uh, those best practices and your customizations of the application, um, which might be different in staging or production, and then translate those into Kubernetes objects that run on the cluster. This is really, really powerful because you're using Kubernetes primitives in the toolkit that you already get thanks to all the hard work upstream. So you're not reinventing that, and you're focusing on your application. And because you're focusing on Kubernetes, you get something that is truly hybrid. You can take this operator and run the application on any Kubernetes cluster out there, move it around as you would like. The operator framework is a set of tools that can help you build these operators, uh, test them, and deploy them in production. It's really useful to look at an example of these to really drive it home. So let's just say that we want to run Postgres. And we've got a number of options for this. We can run Postgres in a container on our laptop. That's really easy. Um, we could also go pull off a cloud database um, and get a bunch of nice features with that. Um, or we could use the Crunchy Data Operator uh, that runs Postgres for us. And as you can see, the Crunchy Data Operator gives you that same cloud-like experience, but we have a few special extra superpowers. Um, one being that we can run this locally. I can run a full stack on my uh, laptop on a plane to do some development. Or uh, it's open source, so you can fully introspect what's going on. Um, this is especially helpful when you want to go look at the interactions between some of the components, uh, go debug some of the pods um, if you're running into an issue. Um, and this is really, really, really powerful. And so what this gives you is this extreme transparency into what's going on. So here we're looking at some screenshots of a Kafka cluster. And you can see some of the environment variables that we're um, setting here. You can see different versions of the components. And then we can get streaming logs because this is just running on our cluster. We've got full control over what we can see. Uh, and this is really nice for you to see exactly what's going on under the hood. So I went and did some digging. Um, and uh, these tweets uh, came across my timeline. And these are some folks that are actually finding bugs in public cloud services. And uh, what's interesting about this, the gentleman on the left uh, spent three entire weeks debugging an application. Uh, and thought it was his bug. It actually turns out it's a bug in this cloud database. And so he's wasted three weeks. Um, it's really great that the, um, the bug was fixed in this case. But you know, we could save him a bunch of time by actually exposing a little bit more information about what's actually going on under the hood. And on the right-hand side, uh, this gentleman has actually uh, thinks he found a bug in a cloud uh, database. And he's just going to write some software to work around that bug. Um, but in a better model, couldn't he actually verify that this is the case? And then let's actually try to get this bug fixed um, instead of writing a software workaround. So this is kind of what you want to go for. You want something that's a little bit more transparent. You can actually see what's going on. Um, and this saves everybody a whole bunch of time. So the Crunchy Data Operator we just looked at is one of a number on operatorhub.io. And this is a community listing of operators. Um, we're adding new uh, operators every single day. Um, and so some of the new ones that just came in, um, the Elasticsearch operator from Elastic, um, a bunch of the com framework components of Istio, the service mesh, are in there. Um, so take a look. There's a whole bunch more out there. Uh, really, really great resource. And then if this, uh, this vision of a, a true hybrid cloud, this cloud-like experience coming to your Kubernetes cluster resonates with you or your customers, Red Hat wants to help you uh, bring these products to market. We have a new operator certification program. And this is really important because uh, Red Hat is truly neutral in this. You know, there's um, some open source licensing shenanigans going on right now. Um, and you, know, you need to pick a partner that's uh, truly neutral and wants to bring this to market with you. Um, so if that interests you, please get in touch. We would ha uh, love to have you. Now, uh, once you're an admin and you've got these operators installed on your cluster, um, you get full control over what's going on. So here you can introspect um, the versions of the operators that we have running, uh, see which namespaces those capabilities are exposed into. Um, so you really have really nice visibility of what's going on so you can run your production infrastructure. But the most important thing is this is all self-service for your engineers. Um, these are the folks that are using your cluster. They're running the applications. And so they have uh, GUI access. You can deploy these via the command line. 
Um, and you know, you're just eating into your cluster quota. You don't have to call anybody to uh, change an environment variable and staging and promote that to production, upgrade things. Um, and it's really, really powerful for speeding up your teams. So I want to invite you to uh, check out operatorhub.io and uh, take a look at some of these great operators. But uh, more importantly, if you want to build an operator yourself, um, take a look at our Getting Started Guide for our SDK. Um, it's really, really quick and uh, easy to get started. And I want to encourage you not just to focus on the partners that you saw on stage today, but uh, building operators for your internal applications. Um, everybody's got really complex state going on. Um, you need to share that between groups, even inside of your company. Um, so an SDK uh, is a really great way to get started with an operator to do that. And then if you choose to do this and you want to um, you know, run some common scenarios by other folks, solve some problems collaboratively, we've got an operator SIG that meets monthly. And we'd love to have you join that community as well. So that's a quick update on the operator ecosystem. Uh, thank you so much.